Hi guys, it's Carl here from Let's Talk Retro and today you join me as I pay tribute to one of my favourite computers of all time, the Commodore 64, and its loading screens. Yes, we didn't load games from these flashy Blu-ray discs, we loaded them from dull, plasticky looking cassette tapes, and these actually took quite a while to load. So uh, while we were waiting for our games to load, the programmes used to put up like a title screen or a loading screen with a nice picture about the game and uh, some music. and. Uh, these really added to the atmosphere where you're waiting for the game to load and it's sort of an experience that a modern day gamer wouldn't get today. So uh, without further ado, here's my top 10 loading screens. So as always with a top 10, a good place to start is at number 10. And we start with Denton Design's Frankie the Computer Game. Back in the mid 80s there was no stopping the pop band Frankie Goes to Hollywood, so much so that yes they even had their own computer game. Zap64 magazine at the time called this loading screen superb, although we weren't quite good at that far the fact that the game loaded with the 64 SID chip blasting out Fred Gray's version of Frankie's number one hit Relax was always enough to amaze us. The loading screen was drawn by Karen Davies and the symbol shown represents sex, war, love and religion. During the game you had to build up these parts of your personality to their maximum so that you could become a real person and eventually enter the pleasure dome. It all sounds a bit strange and it was, but the game was actually very good, with Zap64 giving it a score of 97%. So next up and at 9 we have Green Beret. This loading screen draws itself in to depict a United States Army Special Forces soldier known as a Green Beret, and of course where the name of the game comes from. The loading screen was drawn by graphics whiz Stephen Wahid and the moody almost hypnotic track that accompanies Stephen's image was composed by one of the best known computer game chip tune composers of the 64 era, Martin Galway. I used to often load this game just to listen to this track. Once the game loaded it was a hard but good game that was awarded 93% by Zap64. At number 8 on our list we find everyone's favourite decathlon, Lady Thompson. This game by Ocean appeared on the Commodore 64 after Lady Thompson's gold medal triumphs at the 1980 and 1984 Olympic Games. The title screen we think for the time is a fairly reasonable attempt at drawing the man himself and the music accompanying the image is a game by Martin Galway and is a chiptune cover of a Yellow Magic Orchestra track called Rydeen. Like most people I broke so many joysticks back in the day playing this game with its joysticks waggling control system but for some reason I enjoyed playing it even though Zap64 only gave it a score of 40%.
Next up at seven, we have our first of many movie tie-ins in our chart with Back to the Future 2. We're not sure who this loading screen was drawn by, but we think they did a pretty good job of drawing the DeLorean and the Back to the Future logo. We do know, however, that this version of the Back to the Future theme is by video game composer David Whittaker. The game itself, like most of the Back to the Future games, was nothing to really shout about, resulting in a score of 59% from Zap64. At 6 we have another movie tie-in, and this time it's in the form of Platoon. This loading screen was drawn by Andrew Slay, and is the first in our chart to feature the music of another great video game composer, Jonathan Dunn. The game for us is a classic shoot 'em up which we spent many a happy hour playing back in our Commodore 64 days, and Zap64 awarded it 94%. The movie tie-ins are coming thick and fast now and at 5 we have Red Heat. We've always loved this loading screen in which we think Ian Davis did a great job of depicting Arnie and his co-star James Belushi. The music as in our last entry is again by Jonathan Dunn. Although we've always loved the loading screen we always find the game to be a bit repetitive and hence it only got a score of 65% from Zap. At 4 it's another game based on an 80s movie and this time it's Sylvester Stallone's Cobra. This time it's Karen Davies who does a decent job of drawing Stallone on this loading screen while the music is by one of our favourite computer game composers Ben Dalglish. The track is an arrangement of the movie's unused title theme, Skyline, by Sylvester LeVay. Again, although we loved the loading screen, the game wasn't one of Ocean's best, and Zap64 seemed to agree with us by giving it a measly 13%.
So still keeping the movie theme tie-ins going strong, Arnie's back in true Arnie fashion at 3 with Total Recall. This time it's Stephen Thompson who is the artist who's done a really good job of a close-up of Arnie's face. The music here is the third entry in our chart for Jonathan Dunn and if it sounds familiar then it probably does because you've already heard it in this chart on Red Heat and it's a track that Ocean used on several of their loading screens. We really did love computer game versions of the latest blockbusters back in the 80s, didn't we? And this time it's Stallone who's back at number 2 in our list with Rambo First Blood Part 2. This loading screen sees a second entry in our chart for artist Stephen Wahid, who did a good job of drawing Stallone as Rambo. It also sees another entry in our chart for another recognisable name by now, composer Martin Galway. The game in itself, in our opinion, is a fairly good game and Zap64 gave it a score of 65%, but we feel maybe it deserves to be rated just a little bit higher. So we finally make it to our number one, and would you be surprised if we said it's yet another game based on an 80s movie? Move aside Arnie, move aside Stallone, and make way for Paul Weller and Robocop. This loading screen we think would be near the top of most people's top tens. It sees a second entry in our chart for artist Stephen Thompson, who we think did a great job of drawing Robocop. Stephen has recently revealed that he didn't realise until years later that he had actually spelt the word available wrong on the loading screen. And we must admit that even though we must have looked at this screen thousands of times in the past, that we never noticed either. Credit once again goes to Jonathan Dunn for the music and this by now familiar loading screen theme tune. The game itself wasn't a bad shoot 'em up come platformer either from our point of view and Zap64 gave it a very reasonable score of 89%. So that's my top 10 Commodore 64 loading screens, what do you think? Uh, there's so many Commodore 64 games out there, so many more loading screens that it's, it's hard to get them all into a top 10, so uh, I'm sure if you've got a top 10 it would be completely different, so uh, let me know if you have in the comments. And uh, also let me know if there's a, a loading screen that was your favourite that wasn't in my top 10, I'm sure there probably is. Uh, but So that's about it for today's video guys, I hope you've enjoyed it, if you've uh, liked it don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more videos from us here at Let's Talk Retro, then uh, don't forget to subscribe. But until next time, as always, keep it retro, and we will see you here again very soon.